Hello and welcome as it is a completion of the fifth day of May 2019. My name is Derek. Welcome to the Money Charts channel. Please let me know what you think about this microphone. The volume levels, if they're a little too loud, that's easy to reduce and uh, either by reducing the volume, it's a clip on, but it's very close uh, to my mouth. I don't know, maybe three inches away. But anyway, let's go on to the video, altcoins. And uh, we're going to go back in time, not too much back, within Skycoin, back to the 29th of May, so about a week ago. And, and during this point, what we were seeing was a situation where this resistance was uh, established very nicely with the last prior test being higher than this previous one and in the area of the last two before and the nice momentum that was going in here. So at the stage here, technical analysis was phenomenal. And one, you might have been getting very, very excited about future times coming. I mean, future times like now, like short term, like we're moments away. This is going to be very, very big, you might be saying. Well, that's not what she was saying. As time would... Uh, I then scroll on for a little bit and then you see, okay, oh, look at this move. It's going to be big. But again, she's not saying that. And then some time goes by and you say to yourself, geez, that wasn't that big. And that was really, really sour fall. And she was saying the same thing as well at that point. As, as of course the market just kept grinding down and that's where we are now. So we'll see how this continues to move on. Ethereum Classic has an interesting little setup. Start off within the four hour term time frame, which is possibly looking to break down. It's got a lot of this empty space to fill. It's came down to where it came from, from this down move here on the four hour. But the daily time frame is where it gets very, very interesting within this correctionary phase. Maybe it needs a little bit of a deeper one but what I've liked about this market is this level of resistance, of course, is the key area for where it came from. And when you're down here, you know, oh, where's the next move going to be? And I'd be saying somewhere around here, uh, between uh, well, where we are now at about 10.37 up to, and it could go higher, and it did, 11, all sale ones. And, uh, well, that's what it's done. And that's, a, oh, now what situation that I don't like, and now so far. What it's done is it's came back to this prior level of resistance. And then I say, oh, I can pull deeper. And pulling deeper would mean a move to the 18 average of lows. And amongst the weekly term time frame, failed breakout attempt back in April. Uh, if it's able to maintain where it's holding, the 18 average of lows here also comes in about the a hair below the 10 number. But if it's able to get above, then that would be yet another attempt. I do think there's a good chance we may be getting this dartboard uh, based rally where everything like in the stock market where every all the markets collectively go up and down together and we've been getting a dartboard sell-off throughout all 2018 and with some of these coins into 2019 that it wouldn't surprise me if we get a nice little rally where a lot of these coins will have an extended period maybe 9 12 16 24 30 weeks above the 18 average and if we can get 24 30 that would just be fantastic and I do believe still we're going to be, I'm going to be saying the same thing oftentimes in the future. I don't say it as much as I used to, and I think I will again in the, in the future, whether it's three months, 13 months from now, or even three days or weeks from now, when markets are ready to go, they just go, and they go up a lot faster than they go down. So the amount of time that this took to go from 29 handle on August the 6th, to say the 89 handle on May the 6th. Well, August to May, is that? Well, that's, yeah, two different years. So almost, but not quite a year. June, July, August, so nine months. So three months to get it all back kind of deal. Two and a half, three months to get it back. That's the type of, uh, situations I'd be expecting. Let's move on to the next coin. And let's go on with theta. Volatility? Check. Do I like its uh, wallet? Where what you do is, well, there's multiple ways of wallet, but you got the keystroke file, you got your uh, personal, uh, 
you got your password, you got your, uh, your, your keywords, your private key. You cost, you need to have, it's, it costs like nothing to send fi, fi, uh, the coins out of there. And it's like no time at all. So I love how you know the exchange, but these wild moves. November 30th, this big move. Then this huge move going from 1,230 up to 5,200. Uh, 5, Back down to 1,200 or pierce below. Now here we stand in at, uh, well, excuse me. Well, that of uh, well, 1750, I got 1687 as a line. Don't know why that's in there, but daily term time frame. Let's just get rid of it because it's like whatever. Confirmation. Yeah, I was using this early to try to uh, because I had a, a sell order act, or just for reference of pur purposes I wanted it. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but anyway, they're uh, the sideways range. It's completely down from that 5,000 plus high. Every single move. Barely getting above the 18 highs on April 16th and 17th. That's it. Gets above, back to the lows. Above, back down. Above, back down. And the way it's been grinding for four or five days, pretty interesting. And now the, the attempt in today's new session, already up 5.7 after being up 4.2 yesterday, about 10 for the two. And for the week, well, what's the weekly move? It's uh, 8, 7 after 12 last week, after 1 the week before, and the week before that it was 16. But the down weeks, well, before, two up weeks in a row, 46 and 42. And then you're down 30, down 14, down 7 and a half, down 12 and a third, down 1, down almost 8, down almost 14, down 18 and 3 quarters, and then down 18 and 4 fifths. Yeah, volatility. But the setup again on the daily is most certainly looking constr uh, constructively good. And on the four hour term, the higher lows, I I'm not going to draw a straight trend line, but it's obviously intact. And if anything, you notice how what I did with this line, which I think is very important, the rate of ascent is going up. For when you draw these points together, it didn't connect with this. And this rate of ascent, well, we're getting a nice breakout pattern amongst that right now. The levels and layers of resistance has been marginally getting higher every single time from the origins. And this, all got, I'm going to say, is origins. Because this high, barely above it, and then it corrects. Barely above it, and it corrects. Barely above it, and it really corrects. But after that really good correction, has a really good move, but yeah, well, decently above. But you know what? It could have. That's as bad as high as I'm going to have to see it go to say rarely get above, because even this line would have been that. So that was that was maybe a little bit withstanding, but at that just a little bit. That an amazing correctionary move again, barely higher. Another good correctionary move, and we can see the attempt. Well, here's an. This is an attempt to early on to leave it fast. It didn't do that with all of the sideways correction. I'm going to remove these, the drawings and reduce the can candles in a bit. But there's your attempt here to say, okay, I want to leave. Okay, I hear you. Now I'll come back. And, and now it's doing live what it said it was going to do, and that's leaving the band. And as I state, it's doing it live. And Okay, we've come up to this level. That's a very large pierce below. That's a good high where if we come back, well, I want to see it hold uh, where it came from, and it's obviously in here. Uh, so and I used that reference early on about that move being big, and I happened to draw something like that. And I can't think of a joke to fulfill something, because I spent two days preparing for that last one on the go one, and then I decided to put it out. And that's a, just a corny, stupid joke, but this is where you could reference it more based on the visual of this, because you kind of see where... I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, if I say, oh, this move's going to be big, use this as a picture, then you have to use this up there to probably put some sort of line in here, maybe some sort of, I don't know, but let's move on. The whole point of that is just saying where it needs to hold. That's really about it. I didn't mean to do it that way, this way. Okay, so, live move. 
just leaving it there you can see getting above it and this is why i like smaller candles because i can read them individually red one down which is holding this little area immediate back up this one here gets to that high comes back to the to where you want to because when you look at it from before what do i need to hold on each statement well here it comes up here yeah i want to see it hold in this little congestion area and now it comes back on this same spot I want an upgrade high. So in here, and I can see that it came back to that a little bit above it, that period, and this one broke above it. Now it's just live breaking above this short-term level of resistance. We can see on the single hour term time frame that what happens when you break a key level, because how does the story go? from the established devil. And is it even established? It was established back here. So after this hit, all of this movement in here, originally establishing support to 1596, upgrading its volatility, downgrading its price to 1555, hit multiple times, but the resistance here hit first, that's 1638 first. The lower barrier was huge because it hit it on so many attempts, roughly around in here. And then when it actually did hit the upper resistance band, here to here, this is a successful, amazing pullback. And well, from this pullback, you come back to it again. So again, like I said, coming back in here, you make the statement, I want to see it hold this area. It did. Now you make this move. I want to see it hold this resistance, as you can see that it did. Now that's broken up. I want to see it hold this general area of resistance, both short term and intermediate term. 15 minute time frame. I'm at the point where, man, if this goes up a little bit more, I'm going to have to get me some dash. And if it goes up more, I'm going to get me some Litecoin. Because that's what I'm ratio trading this against. And the more this goes up, well, the, low, the, the better the ratio it is for theta against the cross. And we've seen a nice little short-term move breaking past this level of resistance here at 1739, 1740. And what happens again when you break key levels? That's why I say it over and over again for any market. Because, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, why would I show a one-minute chart? Especially when it's going to take me 20 minutes to upload. The most of these people are going to watch it half hour, hour, five hours later. Heck, even 9, 12 hours later, given that it's coming out 1.30 in the morning Eastern Time. Whatever. And you're seeing the pattern play out. And technical analysis is doing what it does. You have this high, you have this higher low. You came back to here. Okay, that's productive. You come back here. Now you want to see it hold around here. It went a little lower but it didn't do any more. A lot of cautionary signs. And during this time, you'd be maybe a little stressful if you were really moving on the short term. And we got new news about in here. Pull back. Okay, we'll talk about that soon, but we're not there yet. This is an amazing constructive period of consolidation here amongst the 18 highs, but it was supporting this level of resistance. And then when you have some periods in here, this is giving you a lot of signals. Oh my goodness, this is going to be big. And I don't know what she's saying here, if this is going to be big or not. But maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But after this move, what did it do? It had it happen fast. Now it's a pullback. Where do you want to see it hold? Well, here, but I wouldn't mind somewhere like around here. It's having a deeper pullback. I'm seeing it happen live. And this is a spot where I'd be like, okay, th this is an interesting gambling spot. Okay, conservatively, you just buy now at 17.44 and you just day trade this like an SOB or whatever term you want to use. Or you have a buy order. Ready to go. There's a buy order hit right there. Maybe a little bit deeper in there. Because what you're playing is the strategy. Big level of resistance, the quick breakout, then the quick comeback to where it is. So you buy here. So you have to determine where you're going to want to stop or however you're going to play it from here on in. And then now you're going to have to decide, now that you've ordered, where do you start selling? Do you even sell below this high? Are you playing for a higher high? 
I mean, if you're confident on it, you get better profit on it. But I've seen a lot of situations in which this uh, can work out very profitable. With that being said, let's look at the risk versus the reward and understanding probabilities for something like this. When you see this happen, that means you could be saying to yourself in here, man, if this thing pulls back, I'm looking to buy. And then you see, it, as we were looking at the red candles happen live, you would have been ready for it and we've seen live where it would have happened. And maybe in some cases I got some sell orders here, but bottoming here where we did is not a surprise. So we've already found a short-term level of support. I'd like to see it better on the 15 second or 10 second time frame to see how much we're going to get because that might be it. But we'll see if it does. But when you have a big move and you're trying to buy cheaper and the thing goes all the way up here and it doesn't go back, then you don't get your buy order fill. When it does it here, come back and break, you got your buy order fill and you're in the game and you're doing good. If this is a failed breakout, and there's no signs of it being that other than the fact that it's just a possible scenario, not at this time, other than a bit, okay, small signs now because of this breakout, but just small signs, just small signs, we're still filling this empty gap space in here. And when you look more at the 5 and 15, it might show that Okay, a little bit of a deeper pullback is fine, but any every single 100% of the time you use this strategy to buy back like this, and it's a failed breakout like this with that like box score, you'll buy every single time and lose. Uh, that's just how it's going to go. So then we'll finish this off, and I spent way too much, and this always happens, way too much time then expected on the subject. Yes, as I expected, five minute time frame. There we go. Another support test of this 18, but a lot of, and it's funny, after I first said there's no cautionary signs whatsoever, the second I say that they first appear, I, it, it's scary when you look at this as it is, because it, I, I love the fact that you have a nice established break it and you come back to the 18 lows, but to do it so fast is not, is not cool. I mean, it can still work out, but in here, it took like three or four periods to go to the lows. So that, that's, that's a good minimum amount. Take one period or two to get to the highs, and then maybe sideways for one or the next one to go down like that. Take a, take a bit of time, but to go from the highs to the lows in the very period, give back all of this game. And like I state, usually markets go up quicker than they go down. Well, now it's seeing the opposite of the situation. See, I never planned on talking about this possibility when I first started talking about Theta in this video because we're watching this happen uh, very, very live. I mean, the, the spots like this, you got to get out of your whole position. And I'm kidding, sarcastically. It's a one minute freaking time. It's the one minute time frame. And I guess because I'm doing the video, I started that uh, word with the FR instead of the FU. Uh, which is probably true, because if I was just talking to you normally over whatever, my conversation would be a little different. Because in moderation, though using four-digit words of choice, to me, I think is very useful for the speech of English. Uh, not not using it at all can avoid situations where it can bring in a good, very good reference points and using it too much is like anything. It's just that too much. Okay, 19 minutes. T fuel is up nice. Am I near my sell order? Oh my goodness. Come, how close are we? How? Yeah, well, good luck, man. I mean, I got a sell order at 49. Obviously, I didn't hit. Nice move, nice move. Vercoin, it's like meh, whatever. It's actually no, it's not meh. It's no, not even close. Yeah, I mean you gotta move. You go up to like seventy-seven. And that's that's the state okay. That's the approximate area of established resistance. And I think it's probably my best interest to calculate Fibonacci, which I will. Uh, that's the uh, first expected area for a level of resistance. Oh, yeah, that's where my seller needs to be. And uh, 
All this sideways action support at the 18 low is just magnificent. And I'm not drunk, but I feel drunk, by the way. I haven't had a drink in like 20 years. But anyway, the, uh, the move up here would be a pretty decent sized one. But the statement is, yeah, I want to... Uh, I do not, I want to do stage number two, establish resistance. Stage one has been so long gone and so it's along many a days in doing such. The high is 18136. Okay, so let's uh, put in that and let's get a low number in. Uh, 5,061 spot. Okay, I'm looking at 38.2 and 23.6. 23.6, 68.40. Okay, that's, well, is that today's resistance? No. We'll see. Well, well, that's a short-term level. That, that's, that's a short-term level, I suppose. But technically, it kind of pierced below that level. So I kind of want to see if I can improve this Fibonacci and find something better. It doesn't look like it's going to... I know, I can't find anything that's going to be good for near-term analysis. I'm going to work with... The 23 is just a 23. I give it little... I, I mean, if you th take of something like a grain of salt, I give it less grain. It's the 38.2 and the 61.8. They're the key ones. 82.41. If it breaks that, th just do a break above a bunch of ones. So 82.41 appears above here. Well, I was thinking when I looked at the order book that higher prices were expenditurable, expenditurable, at least on Poloniacs anyway, which is where I have, and they, they, these things are 25 hour transfers, 23 hour transfers, like 100 confirmations or 150 or something. So I have to have my next sell order ready for ready to go. If it sells, I would remove a sell order. I'm just going to put a quick line into for memory reference now, or else I'll forget and have to recalculate. I don't want to do that. Oh, close. Two basis off. Two basis point off. Okay, anything we're talking about. I don't want to talk for too much longer. Uh, GRS, nah, not really. It's hanging in there. It's stage one flattening. I mean, it's breakout attempt fail, but so far success within its correctionary move. It's just, a, it's still a long wait and see. I like seeing a bunch of non-reds. Only a three down on floor, and okay, that's nothing. VRC, I mean, my average buy, I got in at 15.25, then I had once. Yeah, let's talk about VRC, because there is a topic that I wanted to talk about, and that's today's intraday trading. When you're on the ball, I guess you're on the ball, at least for time-wise. So let's go to this morning. Okay, I've already got more than I need to. I got into this coin. I'm not going to go over those details because I did so this morning in the video, so you can watch that. Uh, 15 and 25 I bought, so I bought in here. And then what happened was it went up. But I was ending the video off like around in here. So I looked at the order book and I was like, geez, I could probably get, like I was, th I was happy getting 1760, 1770. But then I was looking thinking I can get like 1840 and I obviously did. So I, I, I got the sale, but I mean, I had to be fast because it went right back down. And then I noticed, you know what? I can buy back at 15.30, And I got it back right here. Got my buy back. So now, I originally was in at 15.25. The play was to cross-trade this against NEO. But I was like, you know, I'm just going to wait. If I can get a better price against Bitcoin, I'm just going to buy it all back and then we'll just play it from that point on. I put a new sell order in at 1875 and then uh, I, I calculated what my average buy is, and now it's like 1470 or something now, 1460, maybe 1440. Uh, I forget. 
Uh, I have to calculate something else earlier. I don't got the number on here. Uh, it was it was before, but it was a lower buy order anyway, or lower buy cost. So now, yeah, if it comes up there, that's uh, I'm either going to uh, try to buy it back against Bitcoin or the ratio. Meaning, let's just assume that amongst the session, and I guess the uh, one hour would be nicer. It comes up here. Say it hold, would have held and stayed above 17 for a while, all day. I would have just given it in and say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to take my Bitcoin and just buy the NEO. Ratio trade complete. And if it breaks out, well, I'm definitely going to take it, so buy NEO, and then just wait for my next one. Because before, like after I had my original sell order, I put a new one in around 23. Now I got one in at 18. I got another one in at about 26 or 27 or around there. And then I got another one in at about 8,000. So I'm selling about 20%. 22% at 1875 of my remaining stack re left after this I'm selling about 40% at the next one and then what's remaining there that's 60% at the highest one all right beast I gotta go Bitcoin cash as it's just hanging in there for the hourly so yada 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 next I don't got to go Bitcoin Cash because I don't feel like it anymore. It's just not doing anything. Nothing. Komodo. What's Komodo doing? Alrighty then. This is some interesting strength amongst the 18 highs. I can do 35, 36 minutes. Why not? Let's just do a bunch more. Yeah, I can. I like this. You have, and I, I need more period. I need less periods. This is why I like short candles. I can read them individually. Four, the candle situation. And I'm trying to, and, and the best closest one I have is the one that, of actuality that I want to talk about. But let's just assume that the close was like way, way down in here. And it was, it's just one of those nasty closes. That's bearish to have. Heck, if the close was like this, even if it went less, but yeah, the ones that look like this, I have that huge line. If it's on the lines up top like this, they say it's bearish. Okay, whatever. And if it's on the opposite side, it's bullish. Well, if anything, this one might have been a little bit bearish. But as I look at this, this just came back to support. So reading it on a candle by candle level, yeah, success. And then two periods, and how do you adjust to the message of the market? How does it handle it? It holds it. And there we go. This was the day in which it made that big, okay, this is a correctionary move, okay. So that's where it is. I don't care what the look is. I realize when it breaks it, it just has to come back, and it did. And now it's been continuing this beautiful uptrend for, well, this entire run. Really from this low, even from this low. Nothing but higher lows over and over and over again since May 26th. And this level of resistance established twice. Well, we got above it a bit. And obviously after this, if it's got this little bit of a break, I wanted originally to see it hold 17. Now I want to see it hold 18. How is it doing on the 18? It's doing phenomenal. But from this big failed breakout, fast uh, failed breakout. Okay, so it goes a little bit below the 18. I like how it's recovering it, holding within it. And short term, if the last point low was here, and this is point high, then I need to see it hold somewhere around here. Let's, uh, I know it's not too many variety of coins here anymore. Let's just take a quick look at silver. Anything too exciting going on? Probably not. And a little bit of pausing and holding the recent rally. Because, I mean, gold's got above this level of resistance, so it's holding that uh, rally point move as well. Bitcoin, I mean, it's just pausing as well. That's why I've been just like, yeah, man, I don't even feel like showing. I've already been looking at it today, so I know what 
I, I pretty much can. You can ask me at any given time, what does a Bitcoin daily chart look like? What, what's, what can you tell me about the weekly? What can you tell me about the, f well, maybe not the four, but definitely the daily, weekly, and monthly, I can pretty much tell you exactly its status because I just look at it way too much more than I should. How about Ethereum? It's very Bitcoin Cash-esque like, and Litecoin Cash-esque like. Let's take a look at that. 104 against the US fiat. This is nice. This is sweet so far. What a session yesterday. and Holding it really good. And normally you know, I'm looking at a extremely low volatile, not changing the overall net story of the sideways range kind of day. It's like, meh, no, not me. I love yesterday's session. Four. We came off this 18 average of lows over these two days on the 3rd and 4th of uh, June. A big, big area because this is the area of the double or triple bottom. However you want to look at it. There's just this amazing bullish situation. Uh, supporting this, ma majorly supporting this major level of uh, former resistance and former support. And establishing major resistance along the way here at the 13.5 up to the 13, almost 7 handle. What more is there to say then? I, I mean, the, well, well, yeah, what I meant to say was it held and stayed above some of these fantastic areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take this off of, of Holonex now just because it's horrible in the short term to look at the candles. But it's amazing for the long term because of all the data that it's got. So I've been removing some of them, but I refuse to add another one or to, uh, have the Binance one on my list. Okay. So then, I don't even want to put my line where it is because I'm, I'm going to be drawing a new one. Uh, where's uh, right around here is where it's supported. I want to see short term where it's supported if this was at one of the key levels. It definitely is as far as uh, just pure mathematics, it has to be at some level because of its higher or low mathematics. Okay, so I still need an even shorter turn than that. And I'm going to have to look at a lot then go back. So this was this level of resistance in around here where price action is now. I like how we can see it spent a lot of time there. That's what it didn't do before with this little move. And uh, well, it broke out. Oh man, you know what? This is this is almost a must hold now. I guess the 18 average of lows because it hasn't had that test there in a while. But there's something I'm a little pet not too happy about for if I'm looking to say I want do I want a quick day trade to go long because I think it's breaking out. This is what I'm not too enthusiastic about. And this is so short term analysis mumbo jumbo crap anyway. But if you're trading and it's not crap, unless you make it that, and I don't know how you make it that, nor do I care. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah, it's kind of, I guess overall it's fine to hold this area because that's really what it comes down to is supporting this. It did so on the liftoff area here, but the part that I'm really not a fan of, and so be it, it might be just a bit of too much nitpicking more than anything. Trying to have everything work out so perfect, and the parlay is never. I'm not gonna say the parlay is never cash, but they don't cash too much. I really wanted to see it hold that. When you have all of these little hits in here, and then you have this break. If it's not gonna, if it's only gonna do this and not gonna go further, at least if it does this, I mean that that is just pretty. But 18 average of lows, where this comes from, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. We got this magnificent uptrend line. It's in the exact same area, so there's three things all coinciding. But, I, yeah, yesterday's day, it's, another way of looking at this, it's almost like, uh, you're working very shorthanded at a factory. Say you got like, you can have like 600 employees ready to do like big massive things, do like a lot of different cool stuff on like a 12 hour or one week shift kind of deal. Uh, but right now you got part time, you got your plant working 15, 20% capacity. So all your moves are microscopically volatile. 
but while you're doing that you're building up a lot of energy so that when you get your full force back to work the moves that you can have well it could leave the uh, last ones that we had in the dust something like this it, uh, if you break this regardless of which side this sideways range breaks from it's going to be a kick-ass move either way big up move or big well maybe not that much big down and maybe so or more i mean definitely maybe so or more but you could have very kick-ass moves so you start to see a break and you're in the area watching it 142 144 you're like holy shit this thing is like looking good you got to give the benefit of the doubt yeah maybe we might have some short midterm topping but this thing would have the probabilities odds much higher of having those magnificent moves that would would bring itself within these wonderful markets let's finish this off with fibonacci and then it's time to end this video um or is it i don't think it is yes it is and i can use it on this exchange while i'm at it yeah because we got this and this so this high comes in at 18.91 and the low 1106 50% retracement and, and, and really I look at it as a Fibonacci miss but not really this is a failed breakdown if it happens uh, but I'm looking here at the 38.2 and 68.1%. Uh, 68.1% 68 levels are. And for me not to get that number perfect. Just uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Anyway, anyway. 13.57, that's where we're resisting now. So 38.2 is doing its job. Next level of resistance is 1,541 basis points. Have yourself a great night. Bye-bye.